former President Trump's meetings with foreign dignitaries draw mixed reactions. In recent weeks, former President Donald Trump has been making headlines once again as he hosts a series of meetings with foreign dignitaries, raising eyebrows among some in President Joe Biden's administration. Trump's gatherings, which include visits from leaders such as Polish President Andrzej Duda, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, and former Japanese Prime Minister Taro Aso, have taken place at his various properties, including Mar-a-Lago and Trump Tower. These meetings, while not official state visits, have been characterized by some as a form of pretender-in-chief diplomacy, with Trump seeking to maintain his influence on the global stage. For Biden's team, these encounters present a delicate balancing act. While they acknowledge the potential benefits of foreign leaders engaging with Trump on issues such as the Ukraine aid bill, they also express frustration at what they see as Trump's attempts to capitalize politically on these interactions. The political implications of Trump's meetings are not lost on his allies, who view them as opportunities to bolster his image and potentially lay the groundwork for a political comeback. Brian Hughes, a spokesperson for the Trump campaign, emphasized the contrast between Trump's leadership on the world stage and what they perceive as Biden's diminished standing. However, Democrats remain skeptical of Trump's efforts to reassert himself in global politics. They point to Biden's comparatively stronger approval ratings abroad and highlight the reluctance of many countries to publicly engage with Trump. Despite the mixed reactions, foreign leaders appear eager to court Trump's favor, recognizing his continued influence within the Republican Party. Some have even sought to enlist Trump's support on key issues such as NATO accession. The Biden administration, while downplaying concerns about Trump's meetings, remains focused on advancing its own foreign policy agenda. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan recently opted for a phone call with former British Prime Minister David Cameron downgrading a planned in-person meeting following Cameron's meeting with Trump. As Trump continues to host foreign dignitaries, the political ramifications remain uncertain. While Biden and European leaders may have secured policy victories, Trump's ability to leverage these meetings for his own political gain underscores the ongoing influence of the former president on the global stage. House passes Anti-Semitism Awareness Act amid college campus unrest. In response to ongoing unrest on college campuses, the House of Representatives passed the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act on Wednesday by a significant margin of 320 to 91. The bipartisan bill, led by Rep. Mike Lawler, RNY, and supported by 15 Democratic co-sponsors, aims to address concerns about anti-Semitism, particularly in the context of recent protests related to the conflict in Gaza. The legislation requires the Department of Education to utilize the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's working definition of anti-Semitism when enforcing federal anti-discrimination laws. This definition identifies anti-Semitism as including certain perceptions of Jews, such as expressions of hatred or denying Jewish people their right to self-determination, including through comparisons of Israeli policies to those of the Nazis. While the bill received broad support, Opposition stemmed primarily from concerns about its potential impact on free speech. Critics, including Democratic Repka Miller, Jerry Nadler, raised objections over the bill's reliance on a specific definition of anti-Semitism, warning that it could suppress constitutionally protected speech. The debate over the bill reflects broader tensions surrounding the definition of anti-Semitism, particularly amid protests on college campuses critical of Israeli government actions. These protests have sparked accusations of anti-Semitism, prompting calls for colleges to divest from Israeli military operations. However, some Jewish students have cautioned against conflating criticism of Israel with anti-Semitism, emphasizing the need for nuanced discourse. Despite concerns, the House's passage of the bill underscores the growing attention to anti-Semitism, especially in educational settings. Speaker Mike Johnson, who has been vocal in condemning anti-Semitic protests, recently visited Columbia University, where protests originated, and called for stronger action from both college administrators and the Biden administration. In conjunction with the bill's passage, Johnson announced an expansion of the House's investigation into anti-Semitism on college campuses, with a focus on federal funding.
This move reflects a broader effort to address concerns about anti-Semitism and ensure the safety and well-being of students. As the issue continues to be a topic of debate and concern, the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act represents a significant step towards addressing anti-Semitism and fostering a more inclusive and respectful environment on college campuses nationwide. Colombian President Announces Break in Diplomatic Relations with Israel Colombian President Gustavo Petro declared on Wednesday that his government would sever diplomatic ties with Israel, effective Thursday, in response to the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas. Petro reiterated his condemnation of Israel's actions in Gaza, referring to them as genocide, and accusing Israel of committing atrocities comparable to those of Nazi Germany. The announcement comes weeks after Petro suspended weapons purchases from Israel and recalled Colombia's ambassador to Israel following the outbreak of hostilities triggered by a Hamas attack on southern Israel. Historically, Colombia and Israel enjoyed close relations, with Colombia being one of Israel's staunchest allies in Latin America. However, tensions have escalated since Petro, a leftist president, assumed office in 2022. Colombia's military cooperation with Israel, particularly in combating drug cartels and rebel groups, has been significant, with the two countries even signing a free trade agreement in 2020. Israel's foreign minister, Israel Katz, swiftly condemned Petro's decision, characterizing it as siding with despicable monsters responsible for heinous acts. Colombia's military reliance on Israeli weaponry, including fear fighter jets purchased in the late 1980s, has been instrumental in combating guerrilla groups like the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, FARC, eventually leading to peace negotiations and disarmament in 2016. Petro's announcement came during an International Workers' Day march in Bogota, where he also advocated for various domestic reforms in healthcare, pension, and labor sectors. Israeli cabinet threatens government breakup over ceasefire negotiations with Hamas. Tensions are escalating in Israel as plans to negotiate a permanent ceasefire in Gaza have sparked a backlash with members of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's cabinet threatening to break up the government. Leaked details of the proposed ceasefire agreement, which includes commitments from Israel to maintain sustainable calm in Gaza, have drawn criticism from within Netanyahu's coalition. Critics argue that such a commitment would signify a departure from Israel's previous pledge to defeat Hamas, particularly following the terror attacks on October 7th. Orit Strzok, the hard-right settlements minister, expressed vehement opposition to the ceasefire deal, stating that Israel should not compromise its objectives to secure the release of hostages held in Gaza. Strzok's sentiments were echoed by other members of Netanyahu's coalition, including Bezalel Smotrich and Itamar ben Gvir, who have threatened to leave the government if the agreement is approved. The proposed ceasefire deal involves a phased approach, beginning with a 40-day truce during which Hamas would release Israeli hostages. In return, Israel would halt its military operations in Gaza and facilitate the delivery of humanitarian aid. However, critics argue that committing to a ceasefire without a clear strategy to address Hamas's terrorist activities would amount to surrendering Israel's security interests. Netanyahu's government faces internal divisions over whether to prioritize the release of hostages or continue military operations to combat Hamas. Amidst the internal discord, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Israel to reaffirm American support for the ceasefire negotiations. Blinken emphasized the urgency of securing a ceasefire to bring Israeli hostages home, but faced criticism from Hamas, which accused the U.S. of pressuring the group and absolving Israel of responsibility for the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Despite Blinken's efforts, Netanyahu reportedly indicated during a meeting that he would not accept a ceasefire agreement that requires ending the war. With tensions mounting and hopes for a breakthrough dwindling, the fate of the ceasefire negotiations remains uncertain. Russian development of indiscriminate anti-satellite nuclear device raises global concerns. During a House Armed Services subcommittee hearing on Wednesday, John Plum, the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Space Policy, raised alarms about Russia's development of an indiscriminate 
anti-satellite nuclear device that could pose a significant threat to satellites operated by countries and companies worldwide. Plum emphasized that while the threat is not imminent, the Pentagon and the entire Biden administration are deeply concerned about the potential implications of Russia's program. He warned that if Russia were to deploy such a weapon, it could render low Earth orbit, the primary orbit for satellites, unusable for up to a year due to radiation from a nuclear detonation. The devastating impact of such a weapon would not only affect military satellites, but also civilian and commercial satellites essential for communication, scientific research, meteorology, agriculture, and national security services. Plum's testimony marks the first public discussion of Russia's anti-satellite capability by the Biden administration, highlighting the seriousness of the issue. House Intelligence Committee Chair Mike Turner pressed Plum for details on the Russian program, echoing concerns he previously raised in February about an unnamed, serious national security threat. In written testimony, Plum reiterated that the Russian capability under development could jeopardize satellites globally, emphasizing the need for urgent attention and action to address the threat. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin also underscored the gravity of the situation emphasizing that deploying a nuclear device in space would have devastating consequences not only for U.S. capabilities, but also for those of other countries. He condemned any consideration of such action as irresponsible. The revelations about Russia's development of an anti-satellite nuclear device have sparked heightened concern among lawmakers and defense officials, underscoring the need for enhanced efforts to safeguard space assets and prevent the militarization of space. U.S. accuses Russia of violating chemical weapons ban in Ukraine conflict. The United States has leveled serious accusations against Russia, accusing it of violating the international chemical weapons ban by deploying chloropicrin, a choking agent, against Ukrainian troops and using riot control agents as a method of warfare in Ukraine. The State Department's statement highlights concerns that Russia's use of such chemicals is not an isolated incident, but rather a deliberate tactic aimed at dislodging Ukrainian forces from fortified positions and gaining tactical advantages on the battlefield. Chloropicrin, listed as a banned choking agent by the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, OPCW, has historical notoriety, having been used by German forces during World War I. The Ukrainian military has reported instances of Russian forces deploying grenades loaded with CS and CN gases, leading to hundreds of Ukrainian soldiers being treated for exposure to toxic substances and one fatality due to suffocation from tear gas. The State Department is delivering its determination to Congress that Russia's use of chloropicrin against Ukrainian troops constitutes a violation of the Chemical Weapons Convention, CWC. The statement draws parallels between Russia's alleged use of chemical weapons in Ukraine and previous high-profile poisoning cases involving opposition leader Alexei Navalny and former Russian spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia, both of which Russia has denied involvement in. In response to these violations, the U.S. is imposing sanctions on three Russian state entities and four companies linked to Moscow's chemical and biological weapons programs. Additionally, the U.S. Treasury has sanctioned three entities and two individuals involved in purchasing items for Russian military institutes engaged in chemical and biological weapons programs. These measures are part of broader U.S. actions targeting Russia over its 2022 full-scale invasion of Ukraine, indicating the gravity of the situation and the international community's condemnation of Russia's actions. The Chemical Weapons Convention prohibits the production and use of chemical weapons and mandates the destruction of any banned chemical stocks. The State Department is expected to convey its determination to the OPCW, although formal investigations into the use of prohibited substances in Ukraine have not been initiated. As accusations and counter-accusations fly between Russia and Ukraine, the international community remains deeply concerned about the escalating conflict and the potential use of banned chemical substances in the region. Ukrainian president dismisses high-ranking SBU official amid corruption allegations. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has taken decisive action in the fight against corruption by dismissing Ilya Vidyuk, 
a senior official in the Security Service of Ukraine, SBU, over allegations of corruption. The decree, published on the president's website, cited no specific reason for Vityuk's dismissal, but Ukrainian media had previously published investigations linking him to corruption. Reports surfaced indicating that Vityuk's wife had purchased a luxury apartment in Kiev, prompting scrutiny into his financial affairs. Vityuk served as the head of the SBU's cybersecurity department, making his dismissal a significant move in the government's efforts to combat corruption within its intelligence services. President Zelensky has made tackling corruption a cornerstone of his administration's agenda, recognizing it as crucial for Ukraine's aspirations to join the European Union. The dismissal of officials implicated in corruption scandals underscores his commitment to this goal. Ukraine has long grappled with systemic corruption, consistently ranking as one of the most corrupt countries in Europe. Recent developments, including the forced resignation of Agriculture Minister Mykola Solsky due to his alleged involvement in a corruption case, highlight the ongoing challenges facing the country. Zelensky's administration faces significant pressure to root out corruption and demonstrate tangible progress in this regard to bolster Ukraine's reputation and pave the way for closer ties with European institutions. As Ukraine continues its fight against corruption, the dismissal of high-ranking officials like Vityuk sends a clear message that accountability and transparency are paramount in the country's governance. Philippines protests Chinese aggression in South China Sea summons Chinese envoy. Tensions between the Philippines and China escalated as the Philippines lodged a formal protest against China's aggressive actions near a disputed shoal in the South China Sea. According to the Department of Foreign Affairs in Manila, Chinese vessels, including Coast Guard and maritime militia vessels, engaged in a series of hostile maneuvers against Philippine ships near Scarborough Shoal. These actions included harassment, ramming, swarming, shadowing, blocking, and the use of water cannons. In response to China's provocations, the Philippines summoned China's envoy in Manila to register its strong protest against the incident. The Philippines demanded the immediate withdrawal of Chinese vessels from Scarborough Shoal and its surrounding waters. Scarborough Shoal, known as Bajo de Masinloc in the Philippines, has been a point of contention between the two countries for years. Both the Philippines and China lay claim to the shoal, which is located within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone, but is also claimed by China as part of its territory. The latest incident underscores the ongoing tensions in the South China Sea, where competing territorial claims have led to frequent confrontations between regional states, particularly the Philippines, Vietnam, and China. The Philippines' protest against China's actions reflects its commitment to defending its sovereignty and maritime interests in the face of perceived encroachments by China. The outcome of the diplomatic exchange between the Philippines and China will be closely watched as tensions in the South China Sea continue to simmer amidst competing territorial claims and strategic interests. Taiwan braces for potential Chinese military exercises following President-elect's inauguration. Taiwan is closely monitoring the possibility of military exercises by China following the inauguration of President-elect Lai ching te later this month, according to the island's top security official. China's apparent dislike for Lai, whom they consider a separatist threat, has led to heightened tensions as Taiwan prepares for its leadership transition. Director General of Taiwan's National Security Bureau, Tsai Ming-yen, expressed concerns about China's intentions, particularly during the period from June to November, when China traditionally conducts military drills. Tsai emphasized the importance of maintaining stability in the Taiwan Strait and highlighted China's evolving tactics, including recent nighttime combat patrols observed by Taiwanese authorities. The increased activities by China's military around Taiwan over the past few years have raised alarms in Taipei. Tsai noted that China has introduced new elements into its patrols, such as in-flight refueling aircraft, landing ships, and minesweepers, indicating a shift in its military strategy. While China has not commented on these observations, its actions have been perceived as attempts to influence Taiwan's policies, especially regarding cross-strait relations. 
Despite the tensions, China has also made overtures towards Taiwan, such as proposing a limited resumption of Chinese tourism, albeit under certain conditions. The inauguration of Lai Qingte as Taiwan's new president on May 20th will be closely watched for any further escalation in tensions between Taiwan and China. The evolving dynamics in the Taiwan Strait underscore the delicate balance of power in the region and the potential ramifications for regional stability. Biden's remarks include Japan in critique of xenophobia. U.S. President Joe Biden's recent comments at a campaign fundraising event in Washington have stirred controversy by including Japan, along with China and Russia, in a list of countries he described as xenophobic. Biden's remarks reiterated his previous statements linking economic challenges in China and now Russia to their reluctance to embrace immigration. The inclusion of Japan, a long-standing ally, in his critique could potentially strain relations between the two countries. Speaking to Asian American and Pacific Islander donors, Biden emphasized the role of immigration in driving economic growth, contrasting this with what he perceives as the xenophobic attitudes hindering economic progress in countries like China, Russia, and now Japan. The timing of Biden's comments is notable, coming just three weeks after a summit and state dinner welcoming Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida to Washington. During the summit, the U.S. and Japan announced a significant upgrade to their defense ties, citing concerns over China's actions in the Indo-Pacific region. However, Biden's remarks at the fundraising event risk overshadowing the positive developments in U.S.-Japan relations, particularly given Japan's ongoing efforts to address its aging and shrinking population by gradually opening its doors to more immigrants. The country has seen a record high number of foreign residents, reflecting a growing acceptance of immigration among the Japanese population. While Japan acknowledges the need to address demographic challenges, Biden's comments may still be perceived as insensitive or ill-timed by Japanese officials, potentially complicating efforts to strengthen bilateral cooperation in the face of shared security concerns. U.S. imposes fresh sanctions on Russia, targeting China and others. In a significant escalation of measures against Russia over the war in Ukraine, the United States announced a new wave of sanctions, targeting not only Russian entities, but also companies in China and other countries accused of aiding Moscow's circumvention of Western sanctions. The U.S. Treasury Department imposed sanctions on nearly 200 targets, while the State Department designated over 80 entities. Notably, sanctions were imposed on 20 companies based in China and Hong Kong, indicating a growing concern over Beijing's support for Russia's military endeavors. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen emphasized the consequences companies would face for supporting Russia's war efforts. These actions come amidst the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, which has resulted in significant casualties and destruction. The measures aimed to crack down on the evasion of Western sanctions involved targeting firms across various countries accused of enabling Russia to acquire crucial technology and equipment. This included sanctions on a China-based company allegedly exporting items for drone production to Russia, along with other technology suppliers in China and Hong Kong. Moreover, the State Department accused Russia of violating global bans on chemical weapons, citing the repeated deployment of chloropicrin against Ukrainian troops. Sanctions were also expanded to target Russia's future ability to export liquefied natural gas, LNG, impacting projects like Arctic LNG-2. In addition to economic sanctions, the U.S. took action related to the death of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, targeting individuals associated with the prison where Navalny was held before his death. Navalny's death remains a contentious issue, with Russian authorities asserting natural causes while his followers allege foul play. These moves underscore the Biden administration's continued efforts to pressure Russia economically and diplomatically in response to its actions in Ukraine and alleged human rights violations domestically. Majority of Americans believe China uses TikTok to influence U.S. opinion. In a recent Reuters-Ipsos poll, a significant majority of Americans expressed concerns about China's potential use of the popular short video app TikTok to shape public opinion in the United States. 
The poll, conducted over two days and closing on Tuesday, revealed that 58% of respondents agreed with the statement that the Chinese government utilizes TikTok, owned by China's ByteDance, to influence American public opinion. This sentiment was particularly pronounced among Republicans, who were more likely than Democrats to believe that China leverages TikTok for this purpose. TikTok has vehemently denied allegations of data sharing with the Chinese government, emphasizing its commitment to data security and its refusal to promote or remove content at the request of the Chinese authorities. However, President Joe Biden recently signed legislation giving ByteDance 270 days to divest TikTok's U.S. assets or face a potential ban. While TikTok has vowed to challenge any ban, citing violations of free expression protections under the First Amendment, the poll indicated that half of Americans supported banning TikTok, with about 32% opposing such a move. Notably, Older respondents were more likely to support a ban compared to younger age groups, despite TikTok's popularity among younger demographics. Moreover, a significant portion of respondents, 46%, agreed with the assertion that China uses TikTok to spy on everyday Americans, a claim consistently denied by Beijing. The poll also revealed skepticism about the appropriateness of U.S. political candidates using TikTok to promote their campaigns, with 60% of respondents deeming it inappropriate. The signing of the legislation by President Biden sets a deadline for ByteDance to divest TikTok's U.S. assets, with potential extensions available based on progress toward divestment. The poll, conducted online and gathering responses from 1,022 U.S. adults nationwide, highlights the widespread concerns among Americans regarding the potential influence of TikTok, as well as the ongoing debate surrounding its regulation and usage.